This podcast is for singers who have music in their soul and want to be in the spotlight. We are Invictivox Radio. Hey, hey, hey. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Invictivox Radio. As always, we are your hosts, Mike and Angie Lee. And today we are going to continue on our conversation that we started last time with developing your sound. And this time we're taking it that next step further and developing your project, right? Like really Mm -hmm. digging in and taking it to that next level, taking it to that next step. Because, yeah, you can kind of start to get this this idea, this semblance of what your sound is. But Mm -hmm. then you got to move it into a project, right? And I well, think there's actually, a couple nuances in this, but it's smart to move it into a project. A lot of people don't. But let's we're going to we're talking about the nuances you're going to mention, but we're also going to talk about why it is such a critical thing and cool thing as an artist to have a project out in front of you. Right. So. And really I want you to just kind of talk about your general experience lately cuz you've actually been going through this uh, mm-hmm. over the last couple months. And you've known your sound for a long time, right? You know your influences. You know what you like. You know what you love. And you've had all... It's it's been like, well, I can go in a few different directions, right? And so that's where identifying a project is actually choosing a direction once once you have your sound dialed in. Because you may like several sounds. Yeah, well, it's it's like you were talking about last time of... Um, you know, dialing it in so that you have more flexibility, getting more focused so that you have more flexibility. And that's the same with your influences, but it's also the same with your project. Like the more centrally focused you get on to, on what you're trying to create and what you're trying to say, the easier it is to create it. The project creates itself at that point. So we can, we can talk about, you know, how you lay that out and why it's beneficial to work towards completing a project and not just a song or not just a sound or not just a journey of doing music. Knowing your sound is just the first step, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's okay. I've gone from, I'm a musician. I've learned these skills. I've learned how to play. I've, I've been dabbling. Now I'm creating my own sound, right? Mm-hmm. From my influences and from what I love and where I ultimately see myself as an artist. And then just taking it again, that, that, that next step. But like you said, like, why is that important? Okay, so the reason I love people to determine projects for themselves, and, and we'll, we'll dial in what we even mean by a project, is because I love people to have targets that they're trying to hit. I love things to work towards. And if you have a goal or a target that you're actually working towards, you're going to be way more effective in what you're trying to do. Um, so I love to have those long-term targets out in front of us, maybe a year from now, what you're trying to create, or a year and a half, or whatever that may be. But that year from now, I think it's a really good thing to think about so what do you want to create a year from now what does that look look like for you and a lot of people uh they do better in developing themselves and developing who they are as an artist and as a person when they actually have something they're trying to create when they actually have something out in front of them that they're trying to achieve and it's almost something that seems kind of impossible or something that seems like really big right that we're going to put out in front so that we can then have benchmarks to get there and work towards doing that. And so I like this idea of a project because it's really hard to practice and be motivated to push yourself and to, you know, get to the next level of who you are unless you have something that you're actually working towards. And for some people, just having a performance to work towards is enough. Like, okay, I'm going to do a concert. I want to just get all my ducks in a row and just do the best I possibly can for this concert. And for some people, that's enough. But I feel like once you have so many reps doing that and the performance is no longer this carrot that you have dangling in front of you that you're trying to get, I like this long-term goal of a project. And so for some of our um, independent artists at the studio, for example, um, we have a lot of singer songwriters right now that are kind of just muddling through their songwriting and they, they have this idea of sound that they really like and idea of, um, who they are as an artist, but they're going, okay, what now? And, um, working with this girl, we actually dialed this in yesterday and she's obsessed with Harry Styles. She loves his music. And I mean, who doesn't? He's great. Uh, his music is fantastic. And so, Uh, And she's been dating this guy for like two years that like they have been dating, but they haven't been dating. It's been this like roller coaster relationship. And every song she writes ends up being about some facet of their relationship. And I said, okay, 
she wants to start recording singles. She wants to start getting herself out there. She wants to get up on Spotify. She wants to start really making some moves as an artist. And I said, well, you need to do more than just release singles. You have to have like this goal in mind of this thing that we're building and not have it just be random. And so I texted her yesterday and I said, what if the theme of your project is dear boy dot, dot, dot. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Because she's writing all these songs about this guy. And I was like, well, what if we just make this a project about this guy? You have all these different songs about the same person. So why don't we take that and you can tell the story of your relationship, of all the different things that have happened. And she's got one about being in the friend zone. She's got one about the way he mistreated her. She's, you know, and it's, it's cool because then you can start to see a whole project coming together. And then it's like, okay, you want to be girl Harry Styles. Okay. So now what are some other influences we can pull into that, that you can say, okay, this is what I want this sound to be to dial it in even more. And now she has this project out in front of her. She's like, okay, I'm going to write the dear boy album. And that's almost like what you see with Taylor Swift right now, right? With her, Mm -hmm. uh, the folklore and then evermore and all, even her albums going back, it's like each one had its own unique sound and unique approach and message and all these things associated with it. And so each album becomes its its own unique project. Yeah. And within that, you can kind of create its own sound. Right. Or you can look at kind of another thing I, I like to think about or, or that I've seen a lot of is you have people who are in multiple different bands and each band still represents them, but it kind of has a slightly different sound, right? Like you have Mm -hmm. Tom DeLonge, who's in Blink-182, and then also goes out and does Angels and Airwaves. You have Justin Timberlake, who does NSYNC, but then he also does his own solo project, and it has a a different vibe to it. You have um, Chris Cornell with Soundgarden, and then Audio Slave, and I mean, he was in all kinds of bands, but it's Well, even Dave Grawl. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah, so like you you see all these different artists branching out so yeah your project it that, that's the cool thing about thinking things of projects you can change the sounds and do things different taylor swift's a great example of that but then i looked at my at my artist and i said okay so this is our project it's dear boy and now we can look at the table and go okay a year from now what does dear boy project look like mm-hmm. what do, what are we trying to achieve one year from now with this project and it, and I haven't had this meeting with her yet, but it's going to go something like, okay, we want an EP. We want to have four or five singles on the EP. Um, and this is the arc of the story that we're going to be trying to tell with this story because she actually wants to do something that's more concept. And this is the sound. We're going to start dialing in, okay, are we going to go full band with this? Are we going to go um, just more of an acoustic thing with this? Like, how is this? So now we can actually take shape or this thing can take shape. And we can say, okay, from a year from now, we're going five, four to five e- song EP. And we're going to film at least two visit music videos. And we're going to, you know, you lay out exactly what you're going to do one year from now for that project. And the cool thing about that then is we get to fill in the gap. We get to say, okay, quarter one, these are the things we need to achieve to make this happen. Quarter two, these are the next things on the list that we need to achieve to make this happen. And it's just moving forward and forward and forward. The cool thing about that is it's giving you benchmarks that are right in front of you. You're getting targets that are right in front of you that you're working towards. You are going to push yourself so much harder as an artist to develop everything about you, to be better at everything you're doing, to write the best songs that you can write to put the right musicians around you and to really start learning your marketing and your brand and all of these other things. And so that all plays in to, okay, the carrot now out in front of me is one year from now, this is my project. And so often, and again, I kind of alluded to this in the last episode, and if you haven't watched or listened to that one yet, go back and do that first. But so often we just jump in and that's okay too, because this artist I'm speaking about right now, she has already launched a single on Spotify and iTunes and that's okay and that's okay to can like get moving with that it's okay to put a music video out it's okay to do that and I like that I like movement but at some point to be super effective and truly effective we have to say okay what's the bigger picture here so that we can do more and be more effective with what we have and move efficiently and the cool thing from there is it's like okay dear boy is my first project what's going to be my next one and what, and maybe there's an arc of projects that you do, or maybe there's not. And, and you can be more of a Taylor Swift and move from thing to thing, you know, but it's really essential and critical 
in your development and in your movement to have these targets set out in front of you and then to define those targets. And I think that's a really good way to approach it as far as like executing and then giving yourself something to work towards. But one of my biggest questions to you is, again, going back to you've identified your next project and how you want to approach it. Mm -hmm. But how did you how did you settle on a sound for that? Cause you kind of went back and forth. Like, do I want it to sound like this? Do I want it to sound like that? Do I, you know? Yeah. And so what, what do you think was one of the biggest things for you to be able to go, okay, this is what I want this to sound like. Well, now. I think that's a really good question. And there's actually two parts to this. So there's what, what's the sound I want for my project. But the big question before you even get to that is what do I even want to do for my project? Because like I was saying about this artist I was speaking about earlier, yeah, it was easy. It was clear for me to be like, hey, why don't you just write a whole project about this thing that you're already obsessed about, mm -hmm. right? But I feel like so often the theme of that is so elusive. Like, what do you even write about? And again, it's that narrowing of the focus, right? I will tell you this. Make sure it's something you are extremely passionate about. Make sure, and, and whether that is something that is just fun and upbeat and cool like that it doesn't have to be something serious but it's something that you really care about and it, it needs to be a theme that you can really get behind and even though dear boy might sound um like frivolous to some person it means everything to another um my theme for myself this year that i settled on to is revolution and that means, I mean, that means so many things because we've had so many revolutions of self since, you know, last year. It's been a crazy, crazy year. And for me, my whole project is about the revolution I've taken with myself and the way I want to impact the world by going inward and facing my darkness. And so um, my whole project is taking shape based off of that theme for myself and the things that I want to speak to, the things that matter to me. And from there... I've always been in the rock world. I love rock music. That's who I am as an artist. It's just, it's ingrained in my soul. <laughs> it's just what I love to do. And so for me, I've taken this journey, and it's kind of going back to the episode from last time, I've taken this journey of redefining my influences because I've been out of the game for a while with, you know, being a, a business owner and having babies and all of this stuff. So I'm coming, circling back to it and redefining what that sound is again. And it's kind of like what we were talking about last time is just listening to a ton of music and really narrowing down my focus to those couple influences and where I would be on a tour. Like who would I be opening for and that whole thing. And so the cool thing is, is then all of a sudden I have this sound that I really love. And now I have this project or this theme, this thing that I'm very passionate about that I want to write about. And for me, I would love to do an arc. I would love to do a concept album. Like that's totally something that I would fall into. Not that you have to do a concept album. It doesn't have to be a concept album, but I'm right. just telling you if your project has a theme, you're going to be more focused. And as soon as it was funny, because as soon as I settled on that idea of revolution, that self revolution, it just clicked. And it's been so easy for me to write all of these songs. And not only that, I can hear while I'm writing what I would want the band to sound like, who I want the band to be, all the different samples I want to use, what kind of approach I want to take for recording. Like all of that is starting to settle in into my ears and into my soul as I'm writing the music. And it, you start to get this really beautiful picture come together, but you have to do the legwork of just putting all the little pieces together so that that picture can come together. Right, because it sounds like... And and I mean, this, this makes total sense, right? Art is just expression. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in an emotional state or you find something that drives you emotionally, then you're able to just sit in that space and, and express it and then put, put in the sounds that are uh, in alignment or mm -hmm. congruous with that. So mm -hmm. it, it just all comes together in one harmonious picture, right? Where Absolutely. it's just like everything works together between the messaging and the sounds and where you're at emotionally. And it just really does a good job of actually expressing that and actually carrying that through. So people are able to hear the emotion. They're able to, to hear the words and it all comes together and it just makes sense. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. But I think defining a project for yourself to work on and you guys, this isn't something that you just snap to side. Like this is something that you kind of sit with for a little bit and really go through. But as you define your sound and as you're really like, okay, I'm ready to make some moves 
it's time to actually get more focused again. And we're going to keep talking about that over and over and over. Narrow the focus, narrow the focus, narrow the focus. Because you are a wandering generality if you don't. You're just going to wander from one thing to the other. And again, if that's your game and that's what you want, then by all means have at it. But if you actually want to make an impact with your music, if you actually want to be able to be very efficient and effective with your time and your energy and um, go to the next level, then it's time to start really being serious about what is my sound for now. Remember, all these things can change. It's not like they're, they're concrete. Nothing about this is a concrete. But what is my sound? And now that I understand, kind of have this idea of what that is, what's the carrot I want to put out in front of me? What's the project I'm going to work towards? What's something that's going to light me on fire so that I can move towards that strategically and really put something together? So I'm not wasting time and energy and money on just producing random music. I'm actually doing it with a purpose and a drive. And then I can build, and we, and we did a, uh, an episode on Go Team a couple episodes ago. Then when you get that into more focus, you can start building the team around you too. Right. And you start putting that, it all kind of falls in together. And that doesn't mean it just happens and it's easy because you have to do a lot of legwork for that. But it's definitely the next step in taking that journey. Yeah, I think you make a really good point about getting the team involved. And when it comes to a team, the more that the team is in alignment with your vision and your idea, Mm -hmm. then the better that team works together, right? The the problem is, is when you try to bring in a team and everybody has a hundred million ideas and it's just not working together. Sure. And so then you end up kicking out some members and trying to replace them and it ends up being a, just a whole big thing. And a lot of times it can actually destroy... The project. A project. Yeah. So I, th- I think that's a great point that the clearer you are in your vision and where you're trying to go and the sound you're trying to create, then as you bring people on, just it's almost like a job interview, right? It's like, hey, this is what we do. Is is this something that's appealing to you? Is this something mm-hmm. that aligns with your vision? And then if it is, then they jump on and they're totally invested in the project. Yeah. But if not, then you can just find somebody else from the get-go right it's an easy weeding out process it gives you clarity and confidence yeah and that's probably all the way across the board not just with your team but even with yourself as you go through the process Mm -hmm. of 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 doing it and it just makes taking each step easier and easier yeah and and just keep in mind too that once you set that project out in front of you again it's not concrete it's gonna because you're gonna be taking steps towards this, and this may, let's like I said, perhaps it's a year out. It's an over a year of time that you're taking steps, and along the way, there's gonna have to be course corrections made, and because you don't see all of those steps perfectly clearly yet, you're just gonna lay them out so that you can move towards it. And so it's this idea of okay, is this working at every phase? Is this working? Okay, it's not course correct, course correct, course correct, so that we can keep moving towards this thing, and. Um, I'm not guaranteed that by the end of my project, it's still called revolution. Right. That's just my theme for myself right now that that word just represents so many, so many things to me about my conscience and about my conscious and about the thing I'm trying to create. And so it just makes sense. It clicks in my head. And as soon as I think of that word, I can, I can picture the album art. I can picture, um, the sound of it. It just the whole, the whole ambiance of it. I just get it. And so, that's why that's there for now. And I have, I have a very clear picture of what I want the music to sound like and how I'm going to produce these songs. But when, once we get into the studio, things might shift a little bit. It might change and that's okay. And revolution might become something different, but I still have it out in front of me and knowing that I can course correct, knowing that things can change just so I purely can move and I can move with purpose and clarity and confidence. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. And with that, we should probably wrap this. Bad Let's boy up. wrap it up. So, what question would you pose to the audience? Have you guys thought about just having a theme for a project? I know last time we were talking about how people don't like to be in a box. And I know that a lot of artists feel like this might be a box. But remember, the more focus you get, the more flexibility you have. Focus equals flexibility, focus equals creation. Okay. So have you considered a project? If you already have your sound dialed in, have you considered what's going to be out in front of you? And maybe some of you, that project might be a single. 
it might be, okay, I've never done any of this before and I just want to step into producing a single and a music video. And that could totally be it. But some of you are ready to move and you want to put all this music out there. So have you considered the clarity and definition of what that actually looks like on the other side and when you are going to achieve it and how you are going to achieve it rather than just throwing energy out there and hopefully something happens? So where are you at in the process? Have you considered the project? Do we need to consider a project? Are you already kind of wandering around, but we need to narrow that focus? Where are you at in that process of finding that project? And what can you do today to get yourself started? Get your journal out, write it down, declare it, type it in the comments if you're on YouTube, and let us know where you're at. All right, everybody. That uh, sums it up. That sums it up. <laughs> like it, subscribe it, share it. Let's get it out. To Just all yell it out here. on the street randomly. I'm really hoping somebody one day. <laughs> one day somebody just actually does it. <laughs> Wait, so, and hopefully somebody gets it on film so that I can see it. Yeah. If you do, send, send it, it on to over, us. please. <laughs> All right, guys. And until next time. Peace.